Welcome back to Mido Tackle Talk. We've got no script this time, but we're going to just talk you through making a shared trace. Those are shared traces. Those are modern day shared traces. We don't have to go to the beach with uh, a huge big rod and a multiplier casting reel. You don't have to do that anymore. You can take your bass rod or your ultralight or your estuary rod or your spinning stick and shared rod, a 30 pound, seven, eight foot long braid, um, nice little leader, and then you just tie one of these guys on. So basically, there's the, the base from my heads we all know about. Uh, uh, running out. There's the base from my heads we all know about. And they have been adapted this time to shad fishing. I, I know what we have learned, you guys know this too, is that a, a moving bait is a far more delightful prospect to a shad than a bait that's just sitting in the water. I've got this on camera. And uh, as soon as you can drop a bait down to a shad, and then as soon as you move that bait, they just come thick and fast. Then when the bait's moving already, you've got a lot bigger chance of hooking up because um, it's you've got the bait, you're already moving. Okay, that's the shad pack that you're going to be able to buy. That's got a whole bunch of traces in and including a little drop shot. But my timing a bit wrong. But okay, back to the shad trace. Now, we use a treble at the back there because that's a whole lot more effective um, when you're doing this type of fishing, which is going to, there's going to be a fillet bait on that on those two hooks tied on with cotton um, you can actually get like four baits out of a sardine if you do it carefully by cutting the loins and that's a nice small little trace we're not making anything really big here. it's not for a whole sardine although you'll see at the end it could probably take a whole sardine but it's more for a shad bait like a red eye sardine or a fillet but okay number five or number six wire i think we use number five at this point Shad season coming up in two weeks' time. We're going to be stocking that cool little shop at the RB Center, RB Plaza, whatever it's called, um, in Port Shepston. And you can get um, a promotional run of these items there. In fact, you can buy all kinds of stuff in your shop. It's a beautiful little hardware store, but now it's a hardware and fishing store. You can get mitos and brew baits and all kinds of stuff there, just next to Kentucky. But okay, that's the first knot. I'm talking over it. That's. Uh, a rigid knot it just helps to keep that hook in the right place okay, when you're dragging along it's really poised to strike when that fish hits your bait you're already half striking because you're winding okay well that's at the back in the front there is going to be a little 2-0 it's a kennel round in this case but i don't really mind using um the shorter wire hooks that are so damn sharp but the front hook mainly acts as a bait holder it just keeps the bait it all it just starts the whole thing off another knot Terrible knots, these things to tie. Absolutely terrible. Hey, why twist like three or four of those things? Get it all straight and then close it off with a barrel. You only have to do one barrel, two ba sorry, two or three barrels. Um, especially with this light tackle stuff. Although, because we are fishing in the surf zone where the Garrick and Cobb are, you could easily make a mistake and hook one of those fish with this trace because it's a moving bait. It doesn't really seemingly apparent got wire because it's got a short little leader and the, that wire and the hooks are literally buried in the bait so you've got is a, a fillet bait it's going through the surf zone with a shad off you'll never miss the shad ever you go from being a plonker shad fisherman like i was <laughs> to using this method and you won't believe the difference especially when you don't have to take a big rod you can just put these rods behind the seat of your car these small ones, you know, they're often two-piece, even three-piece. And then you're always in the game for shad, especially when you're just driving around and next thing you get to St. Mark's Pool and the shad are biting, or oh, it's Shelly Beach there. Hey, it's so much fun to have your telescopic rod even behind the seats at all times. Never go anywhere without that weapon, that 30-pound braid stick behind your seat, or 20 pounds. 20 pounds even better for shad. But like I said, you could easily hook a big fish. The other day, one of my customers caught a pig-nosed grunter on his, <laughs> on his shad tray. So, yes, you've got to just have a decent line. You've got to have a line in the water. That's all there is to it. And this is a very good way of doing it because it's so multifunctional. You're going to wind it so it doesn't go in the rocks. You don't let it go in the rocks. Um, it's going to show you how to put a little fillet bait on you or a little red eye sardine. Ah, there's a sticker. But that's how it goes. You just put the hook through the front, and there it is. If there was a little, little uh, red eye, that would be a nice size bait, but it's a little bit big. But basically, at, you may take a sardine and cut it into quarters and use the quarters, the loins, to make your shad. So if one sardine makes four shad baits. 
That counts a lot. Share sardines <laughs> get expensive when they run out when you're on the beach. Anyway, that's the redhead that's going to Richard's Bay to Neil. He's ordered a whole bunch of uh, Mardos and he's going to get them today. I'm sending them today. But in the meantime, that's a shad trace. It's also a snook trace. Also catches kuta because it takes a fillet bait. And there's no fish on the planet that doesn't look at a nicely made fillet bait and just chow it. Far more effective um, size bait um, than, than a, you know, whatever, a big bait. Very good. But okay, thanks for watching. There's all the shared traces going to the bay, and we will catch you in the next Mido Tackle Talk. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. This channel's got the lowest number of subscribers of all the channels I run, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, thank you. Ciao.